All right, ready for Coach Quinn. Jeff Lynch, to you uh, kick us off this time? Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, sure thing. How are you doing today, Coach? Not too bad. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, I guess, you know, first things first, just uh, keys to the game today against Indiana. Uh, <clears throat> we have to box out and rebound, first and foremost, making sure we're taking care of that on the defensive end. Um, the two assets that they have, Mitchell and Boston, we have to be very, very consistent and precise with our coverages on both of them. Um, offensively, we must take good care of the ball um, and take efficient shots. I think that'll help our offense tremendously as we play in our pace um, and you know find some easy buckets for it. And then um, during the 10 game losing streak, I know even you said it was kind of even getting to the point where it was affecting you. Um, what were kind of some things that maybe outside of basketball that you would lean on to just, you know, reset your mental health and, and, and find your happiness and your peace during, during that kind of frustrating time? Uh, just, you know, family was huge and it is important. Um, just, I know we get consumed in our, our basketball lives, but just understanding that we're more than just coaches and basketball players, um, making sure I stay connected and grounded in that way. Um, sometimes just out of time with my mind, watching shows and um, getting my mind away from, you know, constantly watching film and, and um, you know, strategy and all those things that come with a season. Um, just kind of uh, making, let, letting my mind relax in those ways. And um, it's, it's, the, it's difficult to being on the road in that time. So not a lot of um, time at home, but uh, an opportunity to just find ways to reset in other ways. And it just taking, you know, being, a, being intentional about those moments. Mm -hmm, definitely. And then um, with, with Jade being kind of the, the youngest player in the WNBA and, and obviously for this season, you know, some days she's going to see action. Some days she isn't kind of just, what are you seeing from her? And, and, you know, is, is there, is there a different approach because of how young she is as far as, you know, all the, training and, and getting her into games and all that kind of stuff it, it, like is there is there a different approach to that or is it just you know uh would be the same if she was 24 uh, definitely different because of her um coming into this year being the youngest uh one of her roles is her growth mindset and that is that comes with the territory you know looking at games and seeing where we can put her in um, matchups that uh, best serve her and our team. And she's been very good with that, with understanding, um, you know, some games it may be her and some games it may not. Um, but what she does every day is the building blocks for, you know, future uh, and her workouts and her film sessions and uh, the PD stuff, all of those things matter. Um, if she was 24, I feel like uh, way more experienced and also just physically different, you know, um, I think that's the biggest challenge um, for a young player to come into a league that's super physical at that point guard spot, um, knowing how to run the team and all of those things. It's it's difficult, but she's taking it in stride, learning every single day, and um, she's going to be a really good player in this league. Nice. And then um, probably last one for me right now, uh, I got to talk with Gabby Williams after the last game. And she had also uh, talked about um, kind of what she sees in Jordan Horston and sees a lot of herself, which I thought was, you know, pretty funny because, you know, that's it was something that we had talked about and I had wrote about and everything and and similar players and, you know, similar skill sets and abilities. And um, just what have you seen between Gabby and Jordan so far during Gabby's time and maybe what they've been able to kind of work, you know, together, whether that's in the actual games or even during in practices and things. I see it more in practice and, um, you know, the other aspects of games, talking with each other. Um, Jordan asking her a lot of questions, um, and I think she realizes this is a player who literally she can physically look at and try to mimic the things that she does on the floor because of their similarities um, as it relates to their physical gifts, um, you know, their playmaking ability, understanding the game at a high level. Um, so what I've been seeing a lot more is a lot of conversation between the two, which I really love because um, Gabby has played at a high level in this league and Jordan wants to, you know, continue to excel in this league and it 
what better opportunity to get it from your teammate. Um, as far as on the floor, uh, you know, we're still trying to find some good combinations. And uh, I think we will get to a point where both of them on the floor uh, will show what we can do on both ends of the floor as they, as it relates to uh, defense, um, how we can get out in transition and play. So um, I think it's been very positive seeing uh, the connection and communication between the two. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. And then, Bria, go ahead. Coach, obviously these players are at the age where they're going to lose loved ones, particularly grandparents. Uh, you know, we talked to Jordan about the loss of her grandmother and returning to the team. As a coach, how do you approach a player, you know, trying to get themselves back into the groove of basketball after what is a very, you know, difficult situation for a young woman? Yeah, I think just to make sure, first and foremost, she knows um, we are here to support her in any way. Um, and I hope she feels that. And, you know, under, we understand that it's real life, real life situations happen. And, um, you know, she's actually come back with a great mindset, you know, in Chicago, she practiced really hard and her focus was there. And she's been very um, transparent about how basketball is her outlet. And so making sure, you know, we keep it about the basketball when it's about the basketball, um, but off the floor, just make sure we're caring for her um, in any way possible uh, through a difficult stretch, um, being away from home as well as a, a young rookie. But what Jordan understands is she has a great opportunity here and she has a huge role here. And I think she's really locked into being the best version of herself as it relates to the basketball. So um, she's actually done an amazing job with coming back and being very focused and, and approaching her job um, with the right mindset. Kind of a follow-up to the, that shows the spirit of Jordan. I don't know if you saw any of the social media clips of her dancing behind you during the in-game interview. It, it, it sort of just sums up Jordan. I don't think she would have done it if you weren't up 20 at the time, but... She she said that's how you know she sees a camera and she's she's going to uh to have to respond. Glad I didn't see it <laughs> because I probably would have got on there a little bit about you know being focused in those moments. But to your point, um, her spirit, her energy is very contagious. Um, she's very positive, and uh, we love having her here. And her youthfulness, right, is is very <laughs> evident in. Um, you know, her day to day. I'm not a big social media person, but I hear that she's pretty popular on social media. Um, but I think, um, you know, it's just been a joy having her here and I'm, I'm super excited to continue to coach her. Great coach, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you post game.